Good morning everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to be looking at Matthew 4 verses 23 to 25 and I suppose what we're going to be covering is the early part of Jesus's ministry particularly to great crowds. Let's start with Matthew 4 23 25 and he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria. They brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. For those of you picking up this series that I'm running on Matthew, let me just remind you of a couple of things that we see in chapters three to three and a half. In these chapters, Matthew describes occurrences that are important, but are actually introductory. He talks about his birth, his early life, his baptism and his temptation, etc. But by the time we reach 4.23, we see a shift in Matthew's style as he plunges us into the actual ministry of Jesus. This is the bulk of his book and will continue throughout the book until it gradually shifts focus to Christ's preparation for the crucifixion. And let's remember that Matthew's great strength lay in recording Jesus's words. Without him, I believe, we would live in a very different world. For a majority of Jesus' teaching would be lost. Especially his direct instructions on how we should live our lives. However, as a history of the life of Jesus, Matthew's Gospel lacks some of the details which we find in other Gospels. In today's lesson, we were not given any specific details at all, yet the passage itself, the events it des describes, must cover some goodly period of time and distance. For enough time had passed that the word of Christ, we know, had spread to as far south as Jerusalem, east to the Greek cities, and on the other side of the Jordan, the Decapolis, and to the north Syria. Oh, this was some quite large geographical spread. But we have to remember also that this would have taken some time. We don't know exactly. But we have to re remember that this is an era when time travel and communications were very primitive. There was no internet in those days. Often makes me wonder what it would have been like had there been an internet in those days. Also Matthew was called himself to be a disciple fairly late in life. He was probably, probably the last of the disciples to be called. Uh, and if you remember in the introductory session, I refer to him as slightly being an oddball. He was a tax collector. But I also pointed out that he knew how to read and write and be precise in what he was doing. Hence, we get a gospel enriched by the power that is in the words of Christ himself. Matthew describes his call by Christ, actually, in chapter 9. 
But Luke and Mark put it earlier. Harmonising the chronolo chronology of the four Gospels is beyond the scope of what I intend to study. But Mark and Luke seem more interested in putting events of Jesus' life into the correct order, while Matthew arranges his Gospel in three teaching modules. Three specific activities are named. First, Jesus taught in synagogues. Now, we have to remember there were, there were numerous synagogues. In order for a synagogue to, to exist, it only required, I believe, 10 Jewish men. And there you could have a synagogue. Um, sacrifices other rules of the old covenant were made only at the temple in Jerusalem so you could say that synagogues were primarily for an educational purpose I'm trying to liken it to something today for those of you that are familiar with the Quakers or have ever been to a friend's meeting house as their churches are called Synagogues were a little bit like this. They didn't have traditional preachers or pastors, leaders. Um, there was little set structure or little set routine. Yes, a portion of the Torah would have been read and prayers would have been said. We know that. But after that, as in a Quaker meeting, educated members of the congregation would just stand up and teach. There was no set formula for it. Indeed, learned visitors, as Christ would have been viewed as a learned visitor, were most welcome in synagogues to speak because they would bring often with them a refreshing new viewpoint as we will see in the later chapters Jesus might have had a fresher viewpoint than most syn synagogues expected he would in fact cause a furore with his revolutionary and even some would call heretical teachings Secondly, Christ proclaimed the gospel. That is, he told them the good news that the kingdom of God had arrived. Everything they'd been waiting for, he said, is now here and present. Now, whether Christ lays claim to divinity during this period, we don't know. But he surely attacked the Pharisees and their hypocrisy and laid the foundation for the new covenant that salvation would require a change within us not simply compliance to the laws of Moses thirdly Christ healed generally and I say generally because it wasn't always the case Generally, Christ's healing and the healing of his apostles would occur only in people who had faith in him and his word. Now, this wasn't seen as some sort of reward. It wasn't a method to manipulate people into out outward protestations of faith. No, it was rather a sign that Christ could remit sin and not just personal sin least we should ever forget the sin of Adam which had and still does engender all human misery let us pray
Father God, we give thanks to you for your word. We give thanks in the sure and certain knowledge that it is true. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts, to give us rhema and understanding, so that upon understanding, Lord, we may make whatever course corrections we personally have to make in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the riches, honour and life that you promised those of us who live in your covenant will receive. Hear our prayers, Lord. Let our cries come unto thee. Through Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So we're moving on through Matthew, gone through the early stages. And tomorrow, when we look again at Matthew, we'll be picking out again some of the key points of what our Lord Jesus Christ actually said and trying to gain a real understanding, not superficial understanding, a real deep understanding of what they mean. Wherever you are today, however you, like Christ, are trying to grow the kingdom of heaven, I would ask that you receive mercy, blessings and grace of our Lord and Father and through the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. Amen. Bye for today. See you again soon. God bless.